Nico, you in here? I'm up here, brother. Let's go. Let's do it. We're going to check out Red Ark. All right, here we are in the big patrol. 20 minutes south of Adelaide. Yeah. Not bad, we didn't need a passport, didn't need a plane ticket. We just got to find a place. Yes. So yeah, we're coming down to check out a little company, little South Australian company called Red Ark. Um, yeah. It's kind of unreal that they're in South Australia actually. Yeah, or even Australia. Basically, see what all the hype's about. See if the products are really worth the premium that they charge. Obviously, we have used Red Ark stuff before, so we know damn well that it's justified. So let's check it out. Here we are. We've uh, been lucky enough to come down, or well, Red Ark have been, have it finally accepted our offer to come down and show us through their facility here in South Australia. So, Cam, thanks a lot, mate. No worries, you're welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. So, no. we've got some strange looking foot straps. Um, we've gone through a bit of an induction. So, it's obviously a pretty professional sort of a uh, outfit here. What's, what's the deal with these? So what you've got on there is our ESD straps. So what they actually do is any static that you may build up, you know, when you touch a door handle and you get a zap or anything like that, yeah. what that does is it doesn't let it build up, it takes it straight into the ground. So if we were happen to touch anything, electronic components that are sensitive to that sort of voltage, it goes straight down into the ground. So when we'll head in, we'll test them and make sure they're all good, ready yeah, to right. go. And then we're good to go have a bit of a look around. Nice, right, all right. Well, should we bang that high vis on and get into it? Yeah, let's do it. With over 40 years of experience, Red Arc is Australian manufacturing at its finest. Specialising in inverters, power supplies, battery chargers, and of course, trailer braking systems. Now, we all know they're at the top of their game, but a premium product comes with a premium price. So, in a market with dozens of options, we're here to find out whether or not it can be justified. Let's go for a look. The first area we walk into is a clean production area, starting with the BCDC cell. This is where the circuit board and cables meet the casing of the entire battery charger range. Here, they're assembled and then filled with a silicon compound to help it outlast the toughest corrugations. It's at this point where every single unit is tested before it's sent out the door for a lifetime of abuse. As we move through the factory, we enter the surface mount technology area, but not before entering a closed chamber to ensure that no dust or impurities make their way into what is a completely clean room. This is another precaution to maintain a reliable product assembly. So Cameron, these are just all the components in a big reel. Yeah, that's right. So each reel has a different type of component. So whether it be a capacitor or a resistor or a diode, and it's just like a camera reel basically, it just feeds the machine, the machine picks the component up and then actually drops it on the board. Nice, that's pretty That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, absolutely. You can see the speed of the uh, machine goes, it goes pretty quick. Um, so we'll go through this process, different components will get put on the board uh, and then it actually goes through a special camera. So once it's actually all the components are on the board, it's a special camera that takes a picture of the board itself and just make sure every component is absolutely aligned. Yeah, right, so the camera picks up on any... Correct, yep, so if anything's slightly misaligned as a super accurate camera, then it'll actually pick it and actually reject the board, and then we can go back and have a look and see, see what happened. While walking through production, we see a lot of stuff that we know nothing about. But we also start to see some familiar faces, such as the Manager 30 assembly and the Topro Elite line. Another area making use of robots to complete repetitive tasks. But other than that, we can't believe just how much is still hand assembled. Perhaps what sets Red Ark apart is its R&D and in-house testing. One area is this shielded test chamber. All right, boys, what is this room? It feels strange, really, really strange to be in here. Shielded room, it's metal. 
Um, but what you see on the inside is uh, uh, we've got these carbon, these foam absorbers and ferrite absorbers. They both do the same thing, but they do it in different frequency, in a different range. Um, what we do here is we test our products for electromagnetic compatibility, safety critical devices such as electric brake controllers. Um, you want them to operate under all conditions. So if you're near a radio tower, um, you want your electric brakes to function basically. And in order to test for that, we fire electrons at the product and monitor how it behaves while it's being uh, stressed, if you will. So why do we need to shield the room? Because if you want to do a measurement, you need to keep all the noise that exists nowadays out to do a, uh, a proper, uh, to get a proper reading. Um, so the air nowadays is full with uh, radio stations, television, uh, Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi in the building, you name it. Um, so that's why we have a shielded room. And here none of that, none of the outside world gets in. It's sort of an air bubble of quietness in here. Having state-of-the-art testing capabilities in-house means problems are identified early, which essentially saves headache and money down the track. It also allows engineers to make adjustments with minimal lost time. We're in our vibration lab, so what we can do in here is we can alter the PCDC or whatever we choose, chuck it into the box here, and we can vibrate it, and we can heat it, and we can cool it um, to the point where it throws itself apart. Um, we've got the ability, we can superheat it up to 100 degrees per minute. We can also super cool it um, using liquid nitrogen. So this really is a tool where we can just absolutely abuse the product and find out that break point and then we can go back and fix that. We've got two different um, machines in here. This one is a bit more of a long term, put the product in there, you can leave it for a period of weeks. This is more about testing it to meet a certain standard yep. and probably giving it more real world sort of exposure of what the temperature fluctuations and vibration you would expect to see in a product. The one in the other room is pretty much how can we break it. We stress it until it fails, take it out, improve the product, product that failed. Um, so that would be the weakest link, you could say. Uh, improve that, go back in here, uh, and then check out what the next thing is that breaks. Improve that, and you keep doing that until uh, we're comfortable enough that we can commit to a long-term test in the, in the other gadget. Um, because we don't want to run a long-term test and fail halfway through. This is, again, we call it a HALT, highly accelerated live test. So within two days, we've, uh, we've completely tested the product. Well, I think that's just about hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Once so, again. Yeah, thank you very much. No worries, you're both welcome. Thank you yeah. so much for coming, really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. All right, what's up, guys? Now, we're back in the shed. Uh, it's been a couple of months since that Red Ark visit but we just wanted to quickly showcase what we're running in both the patrol and the Jeep as far as 12 volt setups go. Uh, there's a big thing at the moment where people are dropping huge amounts of money um, on, their, on their builds and it might be scaring some people away or you guys might be spending way too much uh, on your 12 volt setup when it's just not needed. So Nick, let's have a look what we have here. Righto, my patrol. So the main battery, every car, when you buy a car, would have one of them um, and then over here is the auxiliary battery which you generally have to install unless you obviously bought a second-hand vehicle we use this predominantly and always have because we wanted to run a fridge without this and something else like an isolator or a BCDC or um, some sort of battery management you want to be able to isolate this battery when it gets too low so it's not sucking out of your start battery so when you turn your key in the morning it'll start you're not stranded. Um, we do run other things, but the main reason for this is a fridge. Um, if you want to camp for a day, two days, four weeks, a year, you're going to want a fridge. Uh, it makes life that much easier. Um, and that's where I've gone to a BCDC, um, a 1225, that's the model of it. That is pretty well so I can also feed in solar power to the battery. That isn't possible with just a battery isolator. The battery isolator will just isolate the battery when it drops below a certain voltage so you can start the key in the morning, start the car in the morning. My battery charger is under that kick panel. Uh, it always has been, I've that's 
always been mounted there. Um, we've been in water that has covered it. No dramas. Tucked away under this front runner rear setup that we've now got in the patrol. Uh, I've got a thousand watt inverter. The only reason we have this thousand watt inverter is for charging a primary camera that we use is only 240 volt charging. Doesn't have 12 volt option. Um, and also laptops uh, for dumping footage. Everything else, even drones these days, do have 12 volt charging. Even our Makita um, battery chainsaw and cordless drills and whatnot that we take, you can still get 12 volt charges for that stuff. So it's becoming more and more achievable for anyone to be charging that gear without spending X amount of dollars on an extreme 12 volt system. Uh, it's, it's generally not necessary. So there we go. As you can see, pretty basic setup in Nico's patrol. It's a second battery, a charger, beers are cold. Now, as for me in the Jeep, uh, not a lot of room under the engine or in the engine bay in the Jeeps. So I'm running a second battery out back. Again, I'm running a Red Arc BCDC charger. Um, so that's ready for solar straight off the bat. And also it is ready for, or capable for lithium. So really the reason I went with lithium is these Jeeps have a really low GVM. So saving 20 kilos on a second battery is a massive deal for me. So I forked out that extra money, bloody expensive. Um, but look, there are a lot of perks and over time, it's really probably about the same cost as an AGM. Um, you draw it down a lot lower, charges quicker, uh, longer life expectancy as well. So a lot of good, uh, positives with it. Um, it's just that initial cost is it can be deterring some people. Um, so yeah, there we go. Well, there's the patrol and the Jeep. Very, very basic when you break it down. Now, Red Arc have a huge range from the basic isolator, battery, fridge, happy days to like a seriously elite uh, setups. Now, not everyone needs them, and, and that's what we're trying to put across uh, in this video. Oh yeah, no, some of those, the total battery management systems, next level. Um, you know, the, the Red Vision, for example, monitors water tanks. You can switch every device on and off. Oh. It's pretty much an all-in-one. It's easier to wire up. Um, it is incredible. And if you're running a big canopy camper trailer caravan, it is probably a really good- Absolutely almost almost needed device um well it's either you have all in one location or you've got a multiple jungle of yeah. other things that you're trying to integrate into each other in a setup like that like you just described i'd be going for it for sure yeah it's a it's a huge outlay yeah. um but i guess that comes to our next topic is why is it that elite price uh there are comparable to other quality uh, brands as well but it is still up there to have a facility like that down there, an hour's drive in South Australia. In Australia alone, but South Australia. Both of us walked out of that tour uh, of that facility and we were shocked on how professional, clean, and, and just state of the art the whole place is. Oh. Like there's, there's testing and R&D facilities there under that roof that, there's, that are the only ones in the country, maybe even only limited a number in, in the, the world, world. Yeah. and not only that but like we walked past the customer support room and what was it like a year ago you called yeah i, I had an issue with my bcdc uh, i couldn't work it out myself literally called uh the, the tech support oh, honestly it was about a minute and a half or two minutes and she was going i thought it was done because it's about 10 years old mm -hmm. and all good yeah it was impressive service Yep. This is why you're paying that little bit extra. Not to mention, it's in Australia. And this day and age, Australian manufacturing is sliding away. So if you can support that, massive. Yep. Well, that's about it, Marco. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? You're happy to, to fork out the money for something like this? Or are you just going to go out and buy the, you know, the Kings, the generic stuff and slap that in and have it last a year? And Yeah, let us know down below. Yeah, let us know below. Um, but yeah, we were blown away, absolutely blown away by that facility. It was impressive. And once again to Red Eye, thanks for letting us do that because, um, yeah, gobsmacked. Yeah.